Hello everyone, how's it going? It has been a while. Apologies, I feel like this year has gotten away from me. Um, it felt like it just started when I created those um, daily vlogs while I was in Norway, and now fast forward, it's November, and uh, it's almost December, yeah. And so it's crazy how time's flown. Um, this year I've been working on a bunch of content for Matador Network, the company that I work with, so I've created a lot of branded films for them. Um, obviously since that stuff was for them, it never made it onto my YouTube channel. Um, but if you guys follow along on my Instagram account, Mike underscore Dewey, you guys probably have seen some of the behind the scenes stuff on my Instagram stories um, and some of the photos and things I posted as well. Because I've been gone for a while, I am going to finally address a video you guys have been asking me forever. It's one of my most commented, uh, the most commented things on any of my videos, people asking about how I create the maps in my videos. So if you rewind back to the Indonesia series I did, which was probably like two years ago now, um, I had these animated maps in the very beginning of the video that, that would like zoom in to Bali and um, Borneo and things, and everyone's always asking me where I purchased the preset or the template to do that. So for those maps, I didn't use any presets or anything. I actually just made them myself in After Effects, and what I decided to do today was a walkthrough through the basic formula, and then the version that I use now that I've been using on my travel films this year is a little bit more complicated. I have more animations and easing and things in the animations. Um, there's like wiggling that I add to them, and I've kind of um, built up kind of this template that I use now, which I decided to sell. So I'm gonna sell that kind of packaged polish version of the template. So if you're just interested in like a drag and drop type thing, you're like, I don't wanna walk through 30 minutes or an hour of, you know, fiddling with things in After Effects. Like I just wanna put this in my video, then I'm just gonna put the link down below. Um, I've never sold anything before um, and I just figured I'd give it a shot and um, hopefully, you know, you guys can support me and it's helpful to you guys. Um, I am going to put the link for that below, um, but for now, for those of you who don't want to spend any money, I'm going to show you a very basic uh, way to do it that's free in After Effects. So let's jump over into After Effects now and check it out. Alright guys, jumping over to the computer, the first thing that we need to do to create this map animation is to download a map. So in this case, we're going to use what's called a vector map. Um, if you get vector graphics, they're basically graphics that allow you to scale the graphic up and down without retaining or without losing any quality. So um, this is great for what we're doing. If you were to use a JPEG and do what we're doing, unless it was super high resolution, if you zoomed in pretty close, it would probably be pretty blurry. So what's cool about this is that it allows us to scale up and down and we don't have to worry about losing quality. And the great part is that After Effects natively will understand the vector file and work with it pretty well. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is download a map. Um, they have a bunch of maps up here if you want one of the states, um, Canada, Africa, whatever. Um, I'm going to use a generic world map for this example, but feel free to dig into this website a little bit more. Um, you don't have to use this website. There's a bunch of... I searched, just search in Google for free vector maps. Um, as long as the file is a .ai or a .eps, um, that should be perfect for this project. Note the licenses in a lot of these things. Like some of them say attribution required. Um, you can spend a few bucks and, and not have to attribute anything, but just make sure you see the license. I already have a map downloaded, so let's jump over into After Effects. Um, and then I'm gonna go, um, this is the default. I just set my workspace to default, so hopefully um, it's easy to follow for you guys. Um, I already downloaded a map, so let's drag over the EPS file. Cool. The first thing that we're going to want to do is create a composition. Um, 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames a second is perfect for what I'm doing. If you're shooting and doing a video in 4K, then you'll probably want to change these settings, but I'm just doing a 1080p YouTube video, so this is plenty for me. So I'll press OK, and then I will go ahead and drag that EPS file down. And so now we've got that, you know, we can scale this guy up a little bit and you can see, all right, we've got a world map. However, you'll notice that right away that the map is a little bit blurry and hard to read. Well, this is where the vector comes in and you actually have to check a box to tell it that it's a vector graphic. So as soon as we click that, boom, super sharp. So I can scale it up even more. And now we have a nice world map. Um, let's say for the sake of this project, we just want to create a video about, let's say, China. So what we're going to do is, the first thing I want to do is, I think I'm going to change the colors. I don't know if I want it to be white. 
Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to make the outlines of this, um, the countries and things white. So we're going to go over to effects and I'm going to type in invert. This will invert the colors basically. It's just a quick way uh, to make the borders white. So now that they're white, that's great. Um, now what I want to do is let's create a new solid 1920 by 1080. That's great. Um, basically what a solid is, is just going to fill up the entire composition with one solid color. In this case, it's going to be our background color. So yeah, that color's fine. Kind of like a blue color. Right like that. Cool. Perfect. Um, it's above the map right now. So we need to click and drag it below the map. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to toggle the modes right here. There's a thing at the bottom that says toggle switches slash modes. Click on that and then we're going to have to come up here um, on the layer that has our map and change it to, oops, wrong one. Well, if you want that look, then you can change it that. I'm going to change it to screen. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. So that's what I want my map to look like. Uh, and like I said, perhaps for this example, my video is going to be about China. So I now, what I want to do is, um, I want it to kind of like show the whole world so we can kind of get a perspective. And then I kind of want it to zoom into the area of China. So I'm going to go ahead and set two keyframes, scale and position. And before I make any animations, there's one thing that you need to do. There's a tool up here called pan behind anchor point. This is used for moving the anchor point of the graphic. If you look super carefully right in the middle of the screen, you'll see that there's a little anchor point right in the middle over Africa. We need to take that. This anchor point needs to go over the country that you're trying to showcase. So in my example, China, I'm going to move the anchor point over here. If you don't move this, uh, when you start zooming the map, it's going to go right into Africa and it's not going to, it's not going to zoom into the, the area of the world that you want it to, that you want to showcase. So I moved it over China. So that's good. Now we can start doing the animations. So you'll notice I already came over to position and scale. You can see the two little keyframes here. Click on that. If, if you didn't see it earlier, you could just click on these to set keyframes, these little clocks. Keyframe, keyframe. And then let's say the whole animation will take two seconds. So I started at the very beginning and now I'm going to go over to two seconds and push on these little guys right here. So now I have the framework for an animation. Now I actually need to animate it. So now you're going to want to take, I want it to start, start wide just like this. So these keyframes are already perfect and they're good to go. However, these ones, make sure the cursor is exactly over these. That's the most crucial thing about After Effects is when people start manipulating things or moving them around, they're not above the keyframes and it starts to make the graphics a little bit wonky. So make sure you're right above the keyframe. So in this case, I should be good. Now I'm going to hit on the scale. I'm going to really just zoom in. There we go. That's looking pretty good. By the way, if you guys can't find these, it's just under transform. You just got to spin this open. If you spin these little whirlies open, you'll get to all these settings. Um, great. So I zoomed first. Now I'm thinking to myself, I think it looks a little... Uh, I want to center it in the middle. So make sure earlier we had clicked on the pan behind tool. So just make sure that you're on the pointer tool. You can press V on your keyboard and then you can click and drag it over. So in my case, that's perfect. Boom. It's a little bit choppy because it's rendering. There we go. We've already started to create this map animation. I mean, this already looks super good. Um, if you click on Enable Motion Blur, if we switch back under Toggle Modes and then turn on Motion Blur for this layer, you'll see now that everything, it kind of like, it has some motion blur to it. It looks a little bit more cinematic. I like it, but it just depends on the style of the video you're doing. It'll also take longer to render if you turn on Motion Blur. So, let's see it. You can see it's just a, like a little bit blurry, so it's up to you. Um, I used to always do motion blur, and then lately I feel like I've been mixing it up a little bit and not doing it. So again, there's a little icon here that turns it on for the overall composition. And then per layer that you animate, when you put the keyframes in, you need to go in and click the little 
it's like three circles stacked on one another. You need to click that little box as well. And then you can turn it on and off. Um, I'm going to leave it off for this one because I think it looks cool just how it is. Um, now I think we need a label. So if we right click down here, we go to new and we type in text. We can type in China. Done. Perfect. Yeah. You can change, you can play around with the fonts and stuff over here if you want to. Um, it's cool. Actually, it looks good just like that. Um, and now if you, you'll notice if you go back and play, obviously that, that looks weird. I don't want that. I want it to stay in, I want China to stay in China. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to parent this text layer to the map. So however the map is animated, the text for um, China will kind of stay attached to the map. I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So if we grab on parent and link here, this little pick whip thing, you have to click and hold down, drag it over to world EPS. Now you'll notice it stays in there. One thing that's really important on this step here is if I'm going to go ahead and reset it. If you don't, you have to parent it when it's aligned perfectly on the world map. If you have it up here and you try to parent it, well, then it's going to think that's where you want it to stay out there in Africa. Do you see how it's growing in size as well? It's pretty cool. So no, you don't want to do that. So you need to align the playhead where the spacing is right. So in this case, I'm going to put it right here. I'll parent it. Boom. That looks great. So maybe at this point you're like, hey, I don't know if I want it to be this color of blue anymore. If we click on this bottom layer and we uh, our solid layer and we go up to layer and we go to solid settings, right down here at the bottom, we can actually make some adjustments. So maybe I'll end up wanting it just to be simple and dark or, you know, a different color. Um, obviously, this is up to you guys and you can play with it. But yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good overall. Um, one quick thing, uh, I kind of take a more complex approach in my, uh, in my little template I'm selling, but if you select these keyframes just to make things a little bit more polished, um, you can right click on this and go down to keyframe assistant and do easy ease. Um, basically what this does is it kind of creates like a ramp on the animation so it's a little bit smoother and it's not a linear animation. That's to say it doesn't just go from point A to B at the same speed. So basically at the very beginning it'll be slow, it'll speed up and then slow down again. Yeah, I mean that looks really good. So yeah guys, I mean that's it. And then basically what you do is you go up to file, export, add to render queue and then here you could, you know, output it and hit render. So with the template that I created, it's super easy to go in and click on the map and change the sizing and things. You don't have to do any keyframing. Um, it's mostly checkboxes and sliders. I've kind of connected everything into this pretty little graphic user interface. So you don't have to worry about animations, keyframing, it's checkboxes. Um, you can create points that go between two different cities. There's this cool wiggle effect you can do over the top of the map. I mean, it's pretty powerful little template. It's actually what I've been using for the last year or so to create a lot of my own travel series um, for branded projects. So I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to share this resource with you guys. I'll put the link below. You guys should go check it out. I hope that was helpful to you guys. I plan on making more content just like that going forward. I'm leaving to go to India in about a week's time and I plan on making a bunch of content while I'm there. It's going to focus a lot, like I said, around the gear and things. It'll be more, a little bit more techy. So I'm really excited to test out um, a couple gimbals, um, Go, the new GoPro, um, a bunch of other tech. So yeah, it should be a pretty fun experience and a really intense way to test gear in a uh, intense environment like India. Um, yeah, and I guess I will see you guys soon. Thanks.